It's back to playing signature event golf on the PGA Tour this week as the big boys are back after taking a few weeks off. And this is going to be a heck of a stretch run where we have a couple of signature events and then sandwiched in between is the U.S. Open. Thanks for tuning in here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. Also, you might be checking us out over on Prime Sports Network. Hope that you have subscribed to both channels. Let's welcome in our lead analyst on both channels, Jared Smola. How's it going, Jared? Did you clone me? Are there, are there two of me now? Yeah, it's actually not <laughs> difficult to do nowadays with AI. So That's true. Yeah, right, yeah. No idea what you can do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Canada uh, wasn't really all that compelling because McIntyre, even though it got a little close here and there, the fact is, is he uh, really did – uh, a great job uh, ever since the back nine uh, last week. He was behind. Fox was up by, like, what, four? And then all of a sudden, like, blink of an yeah. eye, uh, McIntyre was up four. And then yeah. uh, that's it. Tournament was really over then. Yeah, I mean, so I, my first comment on the tournament is I thought that course was awesome. I like yes. the course a lot. Um, yep. It was, you know, it was, it was not impossible, obviously. McIntyre, you know, scored well, but... Um, you, had, you had plenty of guys that kind of ejected and you know, played poorly, shot well over par. So it definitely, I think, separated um, the field, which is nice. McIntyre, I'm not, you know, not going to say any win is fluky, but I mean, this was all putting for McIntyre. He, he barely gained strokes on approach for the week. He gained 11 strokes putting. Um, tough to see coming. He, he had had some good results, you know, eighth at the PGA, sandwiching a few, um, or sandwiched by a few missed cuts. But I, I don't, I didn't. I don't see anything in the numbers that you know could have told us that a win was coming for this guy. Another uh, European Tour player getting a win this year, so is it, that's two yep. at least, right? We've got Pavon, McIntyre. I mean, uh, Dietrich's come really close. So, yeah, uh, look, I, I I know Jan and her being a, a former player. Uh, obviously, I respect everything, uh, all of her knowledge regarding uh, anything she talks about because she knows more than we do. Um, uh, doesn't mean that she's uh, uh, perfect or 100% right all the time. And I think that uh, this is one time that I really, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't, I'm sorry, I just don't believe that the players uh, don't play differently. Uh, when, with all the money they're making. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I don't, mm. um, you know, I just, I just, and I know it's more competitive and all that, but there's just too many good players that have just not won enough. And I mean, you just, I, you can't tell me that these guys wouldn't, I just, I'm not going to believe it that these guys wouldn't have more wins if they had to win for money. Yeah. You so. might be right. Spe speaking of Jan, did, did she give out, uh, Yuka Sasso for the, U.S. Women's Open. I thought. I no, she had Min. She had Minju Lee. Oh, she had Minji. Ah, Minji. That, who, who, that, I mean, I, I watched. I watched. I watched enough of the Canadian Open. I didn't have anyone in the mix on Sunday, so I watched more of the um, U.S. Women's Open on Sunday. I mean, that was another. And what, there were two pl two players that finished under par for the week. That was just a brute of a course. It was a you know good good back nine. So that was that was an exciting tournament as well. Yeah, was it? So what, she was what. She was at five under Min going Min into the final round and then just completely yeah. fell apart. She was five under tied with two others. At some point on Sunday, Minji had, a, I think, a three-stroke lead. And then uh, she kind of ejected and uh, Sasso played a really, really strong back nine on Sunday. Well, we'll find out what kind of tough golf course the men are going to be dealing with. It's a tough golf course. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, but how has it changed? It's... You know, we've seen a lot of golf courses nowadays. They're just not tough enough. We keep thinking they're going to be tough enough, but they're not. So I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? I know this next week, but uh, what's your gut tell you as far as whether or not we're going to see anything close to like what we saw with the women's U.S. Open? No, I mean, I mean, this week won't play that. No, not though. this week. No. Next week. Yeah, I mean, Pinehurst is Pinehurst is tough. I I think Pinehurst could be the type of course where it's you know four or five under as a winner. Okay. I think, I think, I mean, the U S open always wants to make their course as tough as possible. I hope so. That seems like a course that, um, they could make very difficult. Yep. Um, so yeah, 
But yeah, I mean, this week again, we're talking, you know, you could have something. Well, what, the last two winners here, well, H- Hovland won this at minus seven last year. The two winners before that oh, yeah. were minus 13. So we're talking somewhere, you know, around that minus 10 range as a, like a target score this week. A really good prep, too. I mean, this is what you want. Yep. You want a really yep. tough golf course before the U.S. Open, and they got one. So that's really good. Uh, I'm just going to pop up. Uh, here are the current U.S. Open odds. See if we see any uh, bargains. And um, let's see. Obviously, we got to go down a little bit here. I mean, Morikawa is a twenty to one. That's not bad. No, it's not. No, that's not. I, yeah, well, I don't want to get too much into it. But um, I like Morikawa for the course. I don't like that they're Bermuda greens. Those are his easily his worst putting surface. That's, that's my concern with Morikawa. Okay. Next week, I'm, I'm just laughing at Zell Torres being twenty five. Yeah, what happened there? Jeez. I bet him. I bet him this week at you know seventy to one or whatever. I know. What is that? Come on, that's got to change. That has to, unless there was a lot of people who just featured his money. I don't know. Uh, Cameron, Cameron Smith, someone I have my eye on for next week. Um, JT thirty-five to one. Augusta, yeah. J, JT at thirty-five is even a number to consider right now. I think. Uh, let's see. Anybody? Let's see. Anybody? It's a Gallus at fifty. And uh, yeah. So we did uh, all of this talk uh, for months. So hopefully uh, you checked in at that time when we gave you our observations on futures. Uh, But uh, future wagering for the U.S. Open is pretty much uh, done. And uh, can't really get any bargains right now. Okay, so uh, let's talk about Memorial. And uh, let me go ahead and pop up. This is their uh, official website. And this is going to give us an overview. Uh, So I'm going to go over the top three easiest and toughest holes what do you want to start with jared hole wise or course wise yeah uh toughest or easiest oh, oh, oh the toughest for sure all right so let's start with the toughest let's start with the third toughest which is actually a tie between uh the par four tenth which is right here okay and the and then also the par four seventeenth which is right here. So these are the two toughest holes on the course. And what's really interesting about this 17th is that, well, I mean, just check this out. Just, just check out, I mean, this is just obviously purposeful, but check this out. So the 17th is, is tied for the third toughest. The 16th right here, this is the second toughest and the 18th is the toughest. So the three toughest holes on the gar- golf course are 16, 17, 18. And the, and the par fours were, I think I saw 503 yards and 484 yards. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a long course, but if, if you look at what's been more important here, it's actually driving accuracy is more important than driving distance here because the, the rough here is super penal. You know, you'd, You'd rather have a 200-yard approach from the fairway than 100, you know, 70 yards from the rough. So um, it's a long course, but you, d- you definitely got to be accurate to win here. And again, the 16th is a par three, so you've got uh, out of the four toughest, three are par fours, and the toughest par three is right here, uh, the 16th. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, go over the easiest, and uh, the third easiest is the seventh. And they're all par fives, of course. Mm. So this is a 592-yarder. Uh, and then uh, next up, uh, we have the fifth. So they're pretty close together, the fifth and the seventh. This is 547. And then the easiest on the golf course, there is a little bit. Of, see, this is what's interesting is, is that just before you face the three toughest, hardest golf courses, uh, uh, holes on the golf course, you get the easiest hole nice. on the golf course. This is the uh, par five fifteenth. So, and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure most years here the par fives are the only holes that play under par. For, <laughs> wow! For the for the tournament, so uh, like, this is definitely a course we need to tread your water on the threes and fours, and then hopefully do your scoring on the fives. Okay. Uh, let's get into it now. And what we're going to do, first of all, is I, I got a few trends 
uh, that I'm going to pop up there. Or actually, that I'm just going to go over. Uh, here's an interesting one. And keep in mind, the last year was a signature event. So we only have one signature event. And even though I would say you usually would get, I don't know, like, what would you say? 70% of the best players in the world would yeah. show up? Yeah, that, yeah. That, I mean, this field has always been strong, or at least as, as long as I've been following golf, this yeah. field's been strong. So I didn't, I'm not altering too much for the fact that this is only the second year of it being elevated. All right. So when you take a look at some of these trends, the last 10 winners did not have a win earlier that year. So last 10. So if you, if, if you had a win, which is real strange, but if you had yeah. a win coming into Memorial the last 10 years, you did not win. All right. Um, now, how about this? Another strange one. Only three of the last 11 first-time winners, and of course, they had at least one prior appearance here, only three of the last 11 scored a previous top 15. How strange is that? That's telling you that, which which makes it very difficult to handicap, that, yeah, more often than not, the, the player who wins here did not have a previous good result. That's pretty strange. Uh, what you think? Yeah, I got, I got, I got nothing. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Very strange. <laughs> um, the the uh, last 11 first time winners averaged four appearances, so keep that in mind. And Hideki Matsuyama. Now this is for uh, Ludwig, because I know you you're thinking about him for one and done. Ludwig mm -hmm. uh, Ludwig is trying to do something that hasn't been done since Hideki did it in 2014. He's the only player in the last 20. He was the only player in the last 24 years to win in their first appearance at jack's place that was fred couples back in 1998 so two players uh since 1998 have won on their very first try fred couples and hideki matsuyama and then the only other trend that i think that's really uh important to note is that the last five winners have averaged a world ranking of 11.2 during the last five the the the, the, the highest ranking was 17th and the lowest mm -hmm. ranking was second so between second and 17th uh, a lot of good players have won here. And, um, again, that's not a surprise. That That's something that is not a surprise. So, Yeah, and even if you look at the odds of the winners, um, four, four of the last five have been 22 to one or better in the odds. Billy Horschel being the exception, he was 60 to one. And even beyond that, you have, you know, Bryson won at 50 to one. Duffner won at 66 to one. So he'll get longer shots but you're not you know it's it's rare to get someone super bomb winning here and keep in mind that it was interesting because i say that in the last five years but if you go like year six to like year uh 11 don't don't like you like you were just saying with duffner and maybe even DeShambo yeah. at the time those were a lot of uh lower ranked players those were guys that were ranked 60th or 70th or whatever so it used to be a wide open kind of deal but the last five years um you know these guys have t maybe maybe they just have uh, i don't know i think to me i think it's the last five years we've seen the best golfers in the world get better and better and better and they yep. take this seriously they take this golf yep. course and this opportunity to shake jack's hand at the end as a, as a winner very seriously so okay sure. now let's take a look at your uh, that's wait do we have your uh, trends well anyway let's go over your your stats so um obviously we've got the top 10 in course history over the last three years and um but i want to ask you about you've got the top 10 in strokes gain t to green on difficult courses with long rough now this is going back since 2022 again top 10 strokes gain t to green difficult golf courses with long rough and really not a big surprise as far as uh, what you have on your top 10. Yep. Yeah. So again, it's, it's a difficult course, you know, scoring wise, we, we expect the winner to be you know, somewhere around 10, 12 under. Um, and then, you know, again, to me, the, the long rough at Muirfield village is kind of the defining characteristic of the golf course. Like you do not want to be playing out of the rough on your approach shots. It's very difficult around the green if you're missing greens to get up and down. So I, I wanted to, you know, pull out these courses, tough scoring, long rough, and then just look tee to green. So this is not including putting in these stats. This is just off the tee, approach play, and around the green play. This is your top 10 since 2020. Most of these guys have played, 
like 20 to 30 rounds in these conditions since 2022. So it's a decent enough uh, sample size. And yeah, like you said, Greg, a lot of the names you'd expect, Scheffler, Rory, Homa, who we always talk about playing well on tough golf courses. Uh, you know, Cam Young, same deal, has shown well in majors. Wyndham Clark, Will Zell Torres, same deal. Tony Finau, same deal. He tends to play his best golf on tough courses. So no major surprises here. But again, just kind of another way to look at the types of players who play well in these conditions. And um, as far as those top 10, uh, the last three years, uh, y- you've only done that because of the renovation. So yep. uh, Patrick Cantlay, of course, he's a two-time winner. Scheffler, you know, the McElroys, the Zalatoris, the Mar- the Marikawas, the Spieths, uh, the home is. Uh, so really, if you're only looking at uh, two guys that stick out, would be Siwoo Kim, who's actually on mm-hmm. both of your top 10s, and yep. Adam Shank. Uh, who is 10th in course history the last three years. Yeah, right after Rom won in 2020, they like totally dug up this course. And it was, you know, I think we've talked about some of the renovations they've made to the courses they played over the last couple of weeks, which I think were more minor. This one, I think, was a lot more significant. They made it longer. I think they made the, the greens tougher, both tougher to hit and tougher to put on. So I think it is worthwhile to just look at course history over the last three years. And yeah, like you said, again, a, a lot of big names here. I guess I, I'd throw McCarthy in as another surprise on this top 10 list. So I think that's mostly just his performance last year. Um, I'd have to look. I don't think. That's he... right. Yeah. We got McCarthy as fifth. Yep. Yeah. yeah well, he's got he, what yeah. two top fives in his last two appearances, I believe. Oh, there you go. I didn't know he had the fifth in 2022. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and of course that's been mostly putting, but that's what you expect from McCarthy. And that's why he's on my list. So let's uh, actually go ahead and take a look at that. So here are our picks. So these are all of them. And you can see here I've got seven and you have four. Uh, Interesting that two of your four uh, were picks that I probably would have taken as well. Um, uh, Both JT and Sam Burns. It's interesting because last week, we were going over, you know, we get our picks and, you know, we get one and done. And we even talked about our in the running. And then just kind of like almost like an afterthought, we're like, we both kind of were like, yeah, you know, Sam Burns is maybe he's kind of getting going again. Yeah. So maybe keep an eye on him. And boom, sure enough, uh, he looked good. And I was like, oh, please, don't win this week now. Uh, and that's why he's still sitting there at fifty to one as a great uh, as as a, as a great number. So that's why we're, we, we, it was good for us as long as, of course, he goes out there and wins this week. Um, but yeah, Burns uh, is uh, is your third choice. Zalatoris is your biggest long shot at sixty five to one. Again, even though he's twenty five to one at the U.S. Open, go figure. Um, <laughs> and at my top seven, um, my biggest long shot is Mackenzie Hughes, who's having a good season. Uh, I got McCarthy in there as well. And then my top pick uh, being Ben On. Who would have thought that Ben On would be my top pick in a signature event? Uh, but I also like Tom Kim as well, of course. So um, let's talk about let's talk about uh, those picks. So first of all, Morikawa. Uh, he's played here three times. He does have a runner-up. That's his only good appearance. But we just talked about you don't have to have good appearances here. That's yep. important to note, and he's just dialed in right now. I mean, he's playing really well. The thing we have to remember, and these are three key points to remember when you're when you're thinking about psychologically what these what these guys are playing for. Okay, Jack, uh, U.S. Open next week, and a signature event this week. So there's a yep. lot of things going on when you're thinking about who to take this week. When you know, and all right, well, we know that's a major next week. So shouldn't that be probably on the minds of a lot of these guys? And then some of these guys, well, there's a lot of money on the line this week, and I get to shake Jack's hand. So, yeah, uh, there, there's a lot of that happening. But I do get the feeling because these guys haven't played for a few weeks, again, because of Jack, I think they're going to go out there and they're going to they're gonna really uh, go after it. Yeah, sure. And Morikawa's a guy who needs a win, right? Like yep. he's, he's, Absolutely. Because he's kind of been trending that way. So. Uh, you mentioned the second place he has at Memorial. He lost in a playoff that year. He he he. Remember the COVID year? They came out of the break and they they played at this course two weeks in a oh, row. Oh, okay. And the first one was called the Work Day, and the course was much easier. Yeah. And 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 Morikawa won that, so it was on the court. I it's not even factored into my numbers. Like if you look at that um, <laughs> yeah. top ten in course history, top ten in course history, Morikawa sixth. That doesn't even factor in 
the work day win. Because I again, they they said they made the course easier for that tournament, and the scores reflected it. So. Yeah, that's. But yeah, still, yeah. he he won on this course. You like that? Oh, yeah. He's just he's just been trending up for a while. The off the tee game has been awesome for a while. The approach play the last two weeks has actually finally come back. I think I had mentioned a few times that the iron still hadn't been firing, but the last two weeks they have. The around the green game has been awesome lately, which I love because you're going to need that at this course. Like even Mark, I was going to miss some greens. It's just such a tough course. He's going to need some around the green game. Um, and yeah, so I I don't love the number fourteen to one, but it's almost like the books are like not wanting you to bet Morikawa pricing him that low, right? So like I'm I'm gonna I'm kind of saying screw the books. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet him anyways at fourteen to one, even though I don't think it's awesome value. I just think I just think I think. He's ready to win. I think this is a perfect course for him. Yeah, well, he, he was my pick, my top pick to win the PGA Championship. Uh, he, he was there for the taking, but Xander yep. Schauffele was the one that outdueled him. Uh, and, uh, and and then, of course, Schauffele uh, is uh, making a return now this week. So uh, Morikawa being the third choice overall right now. So, yeah, it's 14-1, to one, but uh, Scheffler's 3-1 to one, and Schauffele and McElroy are 9-1. to one. So uh, you, I guess you got to look at it that way. Um, and, and speaking of those three, none of us have picked them, but uh, I, I do really like McElroy this week. And, you know, we talked about the Wells Fargo. Matter of fact, we talk about this. Every time we're coming to a major, we reference which players play really well mm-hmm. before majors. We reminded everybody about that with McElroy. We went over the numbers at Wells Fargo, and what did he do? He went out there, and he kicked butt, and he won the week before major again. And so here we are again, and now do it twice. I don't think he's done it yet, twice in one year, but uh, th- he's never won here. And you would think this is one on his bucket list. So uh, he's playing his best golf of the year, and yep. I like him. If I had him in one and done, I would definitely consider it. I just don't have him available. So I was thinking of taking him. You saw my odds. I had 50, 55. The reason being, my choice was, do I take Rory and put half of it on him or yeah. more than that to try to make money? Or do I just go to take everybody else? And that's what I did. But I came this close to putting Rory on, on my list. I really like him this week, especially Shoffley. I don't like the fact that Shoffley doesn't have any top 10s here. Usually Shoffley does better at places where he's at, had some sort of success at. And again, I know... Yeah. This is one of those courses, but he does have three top 15s and four and five top 25s. Uh, but he's never really been uh, in the running for a win, really. And Scheffler, uh, I just don't know. I don't know whether or not his hot streak is over because sooner or later we knew it was going to end. Yeah, I don't think Scheffler's hot streak is over, unfortunately. And I'm terrified of him on this course because I think, I, I think this course, more than almost any on the PGA Tour, like, accentuates T to green play and that you know that's obviously where Scheffler dominates actually last I think it was last yeah last year here <laughs> Scheffler came in third and he lost eight and a half strokes putting and he came in third that's how unbelievable he was T yeah. to green if he had lost five strokes putting which is still a bad performance he wins so yeah, he's he not just putting putt like okay. that anymore just, yeah if he just puts okay I'm, I'm worried this could be one of those you know Scheffler by four or five weeks well, you know what? That's going to tell us a lot then, whether his hot streak is over. So we'll see. Because he does have two two third-place finishes out of three. So it's not, not like he hasn't played well here before, but he has a one. Uh, yep. in this. And, 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 and that's actually also interesting. The top three players have not won here before. Mm-hmm. So we have to keep that in mind. Okay. So um, uh, Hovland, by the way, is uh, one of the uh, top guys after that. He's the defending champ. And, and here is an example of not playing well and then winning. His first three events when he played here, first, first three appearances, his best finish was 47th, and he had a combined 17 over par. Last year, he wins the event uh, at 7 under par. So, again, you just don't know when that's going to happen here. But, I don't know, winning back-to-back, winning your first time this year, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I still have Hovland in my one-and-done but I kind of want to save him for a major because I, I think that, and I know you get more money on signatures, but I just, I think now that he's getting maybe his game back, you know, that major is still something that he's looking for more than anything. So. 
Yeah, I, I strongly considered how I was kind of between Hovland and Morikawa is like my my top bet. Um, and I, I prefer Morikawa. The fact that Hovland is, you know, what, eight or four points higher at 18 to one, I think he is last I checked, um, makes it interesting. My one like hold up with Hovland is I'm still not convinced the around the green game is is good enough to win here because, it, again, it has to be. It was when he won here last year. It was pretty good at the PGA last time out, but that, that was the first time it was pretty good. It was a disaster before that, so I'm still not like fully convinced that his short game is where it needs to be. All right, and then um, now, again, Ludwig, we, we told you he'd have to break some trends there, um, and he's only played once since the RBC Heritage. That's the thing that mm-hmm. I just – come on. I mean, he's never played here before. He's played once since RBC. He had a little injury issue. Uh, he missed a cut when he did play at the PJ Championship. I just I don't see this being the time to take him, um, just personally. Uh, but uh, Justin Thomas, who's also in that zone, uh, again we both like him, and why not? Um, you know the odds are pretty decent, and overall uh, he's had some success here, but you don't need to have it. So that's important to note. More mm-hmm. more importantly, I think it is is how you are playing, and he is playing. He's, he's, he's got his game back again. He, you know, he, he went away for just a little bit, but now yep. it's back again. Yeah, exactly. He, JT was playing as well as anyone not named Scheffler for the first, what, two and a half months of the season. Missed the cut at the Masters, kind of, kind of, you know, tailed off in that stretch, that, you know, Masters, players, Florida swing stretch. He wasn't great, but, yeah, like you said, last three out, fifth at Heritage, 21st at Wells Fargo, eighth at the PGA. JT led the field at the PGA in strokes gain, tee to green. He was the best in the field. He, he putted poorly, which tends to be the case with JT. But what I like about JT is not that he's putted well here every time, but he has a couple outings at Memorial where he's had spiked putting performances. And when he has, he's you know top 10 those weeks. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for, just have one of those weeks where he's decent enough on the greens. I definitely think he can win here. And I think um, you know 28 to 1 is a, is a nice number on JT, who is obviously a proven winner. Absolutely. By the way, Cantlay, if you're looking for a good one and done, Cantlay is not a bad choice. The thing, though, yeah. is is that he'd have to be three wins uh, out of eight, which is asking a lot. And yeah. um, and, he, and he just hasn't really been the best uh, at closing yeah. deals lately or winning big events. Uh, but he, he has made all seven cuts here, including the two wins. Well, he, he just he just hasn't played well this this year. Nope. The, the one thing I will say, though, is – <laughs> he's he's played well at the places he usually plays well, right? Like like third at third at Heritage a few times out. He tends to play well at Heritage. He tends to play well at Genesis. He came fourth there. He tends to play well at Pebble Beach. Came eleventh there. So yeah, I think I wouldn't bet Cantley, but I do think especially if you're way behind in one and done, I think he's a pretty good option because despite the course history, I don't think he's going to be very popular this hmm. week. Okay, uh, and then in, in this group, uh, by the way, Fleetwood. I would have had a better. Um, I would have thought about him better. I, I want better odds. It's a thirty-five yep. to one. I want fifty, and I probably would have picked him. Uh, yep. Thirty-five is a little low, and the reason I say that, even though he missed a cup both times, again, don't care about that. We just talked about it. But Fleetwood's another guy who's done really well in the weeks before majors. So um, I, I'm not really um, uh, too concerned with the fact that he was in contention last week and he could have played better. But mm-hmm. uh, don't worry about that. Um, the, the other uh, players, though, in, in this next group here, are a couple of your guys. So um, now uh, you've got uh, Clark. By the way, Wyndham Clark, um, he's, I still think, yeah, 45 to 1 now. Uh, but Clark, Thigala, Homa, they're all in that range at about 45, 40 to 1. Um, but they've, all, they've also been very inconsistent this year, all three of them. And it's very tough to take any of them this week, to, to tell you the truth, because I don't know how they're going to play. So if you just took one player based on the golf course out of those three, who would you go with? Based on the golf course, it'd be Hideki for me. Um, Wyndham is like breaking my brain. I don't know what to do with him because every week he's at these odds that seem to be way too long for a guy that has, has won as much as he has over the last 12 months, has contended as much as he has over the last, last 12 months. He's also coming into this event, though, in the not the greatest form. And I don't love this course for Wyndham Clark either because, like I said, I think it's more of an accuracy course where Wyndham is more of a, you know, he, he gains off he gains off the tee with his distance. But he, he can get a little wild with it. And, again, I don't, I don't want you hitting it, you know, 330. But 
in the rough. I'd rather have you hitting it, you know, 290 in the fairway. So I don't love the course fit for Wyndham. I still think, you know, 45 to one, I wouldn't argue with anyone betting him, but I like Hideki here. I think um, this is a course where I think he, he should play well again. He's good at everything. He's good off the tee. He's good on approach. He's good around the green. It always comes down to the putter with Hideki, but I think otherwise um, this should be a good course fit for Hideki. Uh, and then a couple guys that I took in this range, uh, you, when we're taking a look at, um, at matter of fact, uh, Tom Kim, he was 60 to one and now he's 45 to one. So he's dropped big time since this morning. Um, and then you have on and fee now. So all three of them are on my list. Kim, look, I liked him last week. I went over why, and why would I, I, I know he's only played here once mm-hmm. and his result was 10 over miscut. cut, but I'm not, I'm just not going to worry about that. I'm going to just go with his form, uh, which is really good right now. Uh, on, uh, two top fives in his last three. He was runner-up playoff loser to DeChambeau back in 2018 on this golf course. And he's relatively played well uh, with five top 25s out of eight. And Finau, um, Finau's got four top 15s out of seven. So he's had his moments here. But he's also got four top 20s in his last six. He has that runner-up at Houston. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the, these the, the, those three, uh, I, I just really also like because of the odds. I mean, uh, again, like yeah. I said, I like McElroy at that low number. But uh, every week in these big events, there are really good bargains to take advantage of. And those are three guys that I zeroed in on. Yeah, Fino is definitely my favorite among those three. I like Tom Kim, too. Again, I think um, people might be scared off him here because it is such a long golf course. But I think, it, again, it's more of an accuracy course, and that's what Tom Kim is when he's on. So I think he can play well here. But Fino is my favorite. Just, I mean, T to green, Fino has been a top 10 player this season. The putter has been a mess for most of the year. But it's been – it hasn't even been good the last, like, month. But he's been, like, almost field average as a putter. But if he can just be field average as a putter – and keep hitting it how he has. Um, I think he has a chance. And again, like we said, he showed up on that list of uh, best players. Yeah, seventh best player in strokes gain, tee to green on these tough golf courses with long roughs. So I think it's it's a good fit for him. Uh, and then also around this area, we've got Siwoo Kim, uh, who's dropped down to fifty to one. And why not? Uh, if you look at it, in his first four appearances here, uh, a combined one under. His last four, a combined eleven under. Last visit was fourth last year. That is his last top five on the PGA Tour. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing, uh, depending. But horse for courses, he's done really well here the last four years. We talked about it. He's on your list, both of them. Um, But, but, uh, you know, he'd have to pretty much, you know, put it all together one week. And we know he can, especially in a big event. Uh, Also, Sam Burns is in this uh, list here. Uh, Burns has now dropped down to 50 to 1. But again, uh, we, we like the way that Burns seems to be. And, and we'll remember, just like Scheffler, had a kid, big distraction. Now it's nice to see that maybe that's past him. And because in his last two events, non majors, 10th and 13th, we've talked about Sam Burns does not play well at majors, hasn't done it so far. So really, his last two with 13th and 10th. So, yeah, why not take him this week? And, by the way, his best finish here last year was last year when he finished 16th at even par. Yeah, I mean, I like 50-1 to 1 on a guy who has won four times on the PGA Tour in the last three years, right? And he, he's trending up. I mean, we're to the point now with Scheffler, but with when, when I'm making my bets, I'm really trying to, like, think about, okay, if this guy is in the mix with Scheffler on Sunday, do I believe he can actually beat Scheffler? And like Sam Burns is someone like I I think oh yeah he, he did he did it at Colonial and that's best Sheffield. buddies yeah I mean I yeah. he, he's just a guy I would trust in the mix on Sunday and I'm getting him at fifty to one he's trending up I think he's a good bet this week all right and then uh, some of the other long shots I know you uh, were thinking about Lowry uh, he's had three good yeah. appearances on, on the tour this year he's played well here from time to time um, I've got Straka and Bradley on my picks. Uh, I like the way Straka has improved all f- from all four of his appearances here. I also like the fact that his last five, actually his last four non-major, no, if, let's just say the last five, the only he, he missed a cut at the PGA, but the other four were top twenties, two top ten, excuse me, one uh, three top tens and two top fives. Keegan Bradley, meanwhile, hasn't really shown much here. A couple top tens out of thirteen, a combined twenty-seven over par in his last five. But I do like the way that he's trending right now and again that's my formula this week how are you trending now and um 
uh, and um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah, how are you trending now? And oh yeah, and the odds, obviously, are you getting yeah. a bargain number? And uh, Strzok yeah. and Bradley are both about sixty to one. Yeah, and both both Strzok and Bradley are just hitting it really well, which you'd expect to hear based on the results. But you know, I'd, I'd say the results have not been fluky. They've been you know hitting it well either off the tee or on approach, or both. Um, yeah, I considered Shane Lowry. I mean, I was on him last week at the RBC. Was never really in the mix. It's not a bad tournament for him though. He's he gained strokes in all all four categories, and he's just he's continued to hit it pretty well, and has the course history here. Again, he's Lowry's another guy tougher the golf course more I like him he's one of the better short game players in the world in my opinion so I like that fact um, I think this this would make sense as a course that he would play well at uh, and, couple, and then uh, other players on our list a little bit later on with odds you got Zala Torres again he was fifth year in his only one of his only two appearances his last appearance in 2022 don't really care that he missed a cut all the way back in 18 he wasn't anywhere right. near the player he is now um, but again, I, I put Zalatoris kind of in the group with the, the, the Homers and the Clarks and the Thigalas, but you're getting double the, the odds here with Zalatoris. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And another week where like, I, I swear, Greg, I did not go into you know, this morning <laughs> thinking I was going to bet Zalatoris, but then he passed up. I, I got him at 75 to 1 this morning. So he's come down a little bit. I just, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's hurt. I don't know. I, I'm willing to take the chance because. Zalatoris is another guy. If he's in the mix on Sunday, maybe this is wrong because the guy's only what one one PGA Tour tournament. But um, I, I think if he's in the mix on Sunday, he's someone who could take down Scheffler. All right, and then um, I've got Denny McCarthy. See, for me, it's just yeah, fifth and second. You know, last two appearances. That must mean he is dialed in at this golf course. So I think that's important. And then also. Um, I went with Mackenzie Hughes, like I said. If you look at it, McHugh's uh, coming off a, a top 10 last week, sixth at Wells Fargo, which was the last signature event, um, and third at a very tough Valspar. So tough golf courses he's done pretty good at so far. It's been a really good year for him, um, and he's 100 to 1. That's the reason I put a few bucks on him at 100 to 1 as a long shot. That's pretty much it. But, yeah, McCarthy, uh, I just felt that I just could not not take him considering how well he's played here the last two years. And he almost, he almost won a tournament like six weeks ago, too. So it's not yep. like he's, you know, far off. Yeah, he was runner up at Texas. And then, um, uh, so uh, others that you were considering, we talked about Lowry. Um, yep. You mentioned Finau and Hovland. So, uh, matter of fact, I tell you what, let's, uh, what, let's, let's put up the, the uh, one and done. So here are the one and dones. So uh, you've got uh, Ludwig and uh, Victor as your two possible uh, options this week in one and done. And I have Tony Finau, Tom Kim, and Morikawa as my three possibilities. Not sure yet at all what I'm going to do right now. I'm leaning towards either Kim or Morikawa at this point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but who knows? I might just go with Kim only because you took Morikawa uh, as your top pick, and I don't want to screw around with our, our uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, don't jinx me. Don't jinx me. Exactly. That's um, good way yeah, to put it. Yeah, and, and, and if I had Morikawa still, I would use him in one and done. I, I like him that much this week. I think this is the spot to use him. I already used him. Um, so I'm, I'm probably leaning towards Hovland. Um, you know, again, I t- talked about being close to betting him. I do have some concerns, but I do think this is a good spot to use him. And then a- Aberg would be the um, kind of the, the low-owned play if you want to get a little funky this week. Obviously, concerns – with the injury, hasn't played here, but just if he is healthy and on his game, I think he's a top five ball striker on tour, which is super important at this course. Um, so I think he could be interesting if you want to be a little riskier. And then uh, the the other player that I want to bring up uh, is a player that I was kind of thinking of, uh, but I just felt, yeah, this is not the week. It's a big event. There's a lot of other big players, but um, I like the way Lee Hodges is playing. And, um, Lee Hodges. Yeah. And I think that he's somebody to keep an eye on. I know he's already won last year, but uh, I, I think that uh, he's trending well. And he was 12th here last year in his only appearance. So okay, yeah. if you're looking for a good fantasy play, maybe a good top 10, one of those deals, you know, out of nowhere type players, uh, keep an eye on Lee Hodges. 
I mean, 20, 24, 24th, 12th, and 12th in his last three. In the last two, the Irons have been like two of his two of his better iron performances of his career. His last two times out, so the Irons are definitely hot. Um, yeah, I had not looked at Lee Hodges, but makes makes some sense. Uh, were there any other players that you were looking at before we wrap up no, as I, far as long shots? No, there was no one beyond like the Lowry's Al Torres range that I really considered this big. I again, signature event, tough course. Yep. Um, I, I would not expect someone you know beyond eighty or so to one to win this. Yeah, because a lot of those long shots too, it's like nobody sticks out. Like Shank does, but he's playing awful lately. Yeah. But Shank could be somebody, and he's on your list. So if he gets off yep. to a good start, he is 180 to one. And and Ricky again, Ricky's not playing well. At least he's making cuts, but this is a good golf course for Ricky. You know, he's runner up twice, 50 yeah. percent in the top 25, 130 to one. But yeah, it's just uh, these guys just aren't playing well right now. Yeah, if you wanted me to throw it, I'm not, I'm not even sure what his odds are, but I think Stefan Jaeger. He's 100 to one. Yeah, I think I think I, I if you want a 100 to one guy, I'd throw out Jaeger. Um, having a good season. If you look at the courses he he's played well at are all courses where they're, they're tough courses where the winning score has you know been. You know, he played well at Torrey, Houston obviously played tough. Like you want him on tough golf courses, and you know, this this fits that bill. Jared, appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk U.S. Open golf next week. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, have Jan come on and uh, talk about the golf course, give us a lot more inside info on what to expect. Um, but uh, we're going to go deep into the U.S. Open next week. Uh, and, uh, and then another signature event follows with the Travelers. So this is it. We've been waiting for it. We're about to embark on the three-week stretch that we've never seen before. I'm going to start my U.S. Open research like tomorrow. I'm, I'm so pumped for that um, <laughs> course. I think it's, it's going to be awesome. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, everybody out there. Of course, uh, subscribe, like, and share. We would really appreciate that. Let us know uh, also if you have anything that you'd like for us to do, any questions, comments. Uh, you can share that with us in the comments section. And we'll see you guys next week.